All right, guys, so if you're still getting into Blender and want to create some cool models, I'm going to show you how you can kind of create things like this that seem rather complex, but it's really quite simple and really easy. It's just about setting up uh, before you get started here for the most part, or as you're working anyways. So we'll take the default cube as an example and press uh, G and X and move it over and create. So shift A, create a plane axis empty, right? And this plane axis empty, all you're going to do is take your object going to mirror it. You can go ahead and mirror across the empty here. It's like so. And you might have to bisect it if you have them intersecting. We'll play with that here in a second. But basically now you have opportunity to just go in and start poly modeling. So whether you use subdivision surface modeling techniques or Boolean ingon, doesn't matter. It just just start modeling. That's all you're going to do. Uh, so we'll go with this for now. But I'm going to hit Control 3, which subdivides it, and there we go. Yeah, I can kind of see something taking effect here. Position it accordingly. Shade is smooth. Maybe come through here, add a couple bevels. Like turn this off in uh, edit mode. It's helpful. Subdivision off in edit mode. That little icon on the side there. Pull that in. Now, technically, these aren't cylinders, They're still off shaped. So if you do a loop cut, hit Control R and do a loop cut like that. A little trick, you select a loop, you select loops rings, install the loop tools add-on, come up here and just click circle. Uh, kind of finish it out for you real quick. Not a big deal. Control Shift click to select like that, and then E and S, and we can start to work this shape out, right? Which is really fun, but at some point you're going to end up probably wanting to create other things. So you could do like another cube. Um, start working this shape out a little bit. It's a good idea maybe to just move it a little bit first. Alt Z, get an X ray. All right. Okay, so this object you'll also mirror. This one we're going to do a little bit different. Mirror it across the empty, like so, but we're going to bisect it because right now they're kind of like overlapping each other. So you bisect it. Now we can play around with this idea. This, All right? So only working half of it at a time. Like I was saying, you could do subdivision, but you can also do Boolean ingon workflows as well. So if I wanted to come through here and Extrude that up, chamfer that, add a bevel modifier to everything using hard ops. I can do that real quick, like start to make this look a lot nicer. Bevel an edge. All right, bump up the counts. There you go. So we can also turn on box cutter, go to town. number like that now we could take segments of this model and like push them out and then uh maybe like run them across the symmetry do that number it's a super powerful way of working uh, but you don't have to do it like that you could certainly do something like box cutter or bull tools grab your main shape here you can keep making additional little elements as needed Try that again. Should have joined together, but it is not acting like. All right. And the reason is because I have an option right here when you press D. The bevels don't go to the last. So that's what's going on there. I have to re bevel it basically. That's good though. I like working like that. So we got to turn that on like that. But basically, you can start using that stack modeling video, like the, how I was doing in that stack modeling video. You can still do that over here. We'll control and click bevel with hard ops. Adds a new bevel, so it's at the end here. Put it uh, before the mirror, though. Keep the mirror at the end, probably. What you'll want to do, you might want to turn loop slide off. See if that helps out. Right. 
So you keep going through this process now and uh, just pretty much hammering it out. So the rest of this video, I'm going to let a time lapse play of the other two. And like I was saying, they only took 30 minutes each, like individually, and it's like an hour combined total. It's a really fast way of working when uh, you get used to or comfortable with uh, doing sub D modeling and all that fun stuff. So it's just a, uh, just a way of working. At some point, though, just a quick tip. This sub D model here, you're probably going to eventually apply the subdivision. And then uh, I'll keep working on it. More faces and whatnot, so I have more opportunity to kind of make little additional changes or whatever the case. Cut things in and all that fun stuff, then subdivide it again. So, control 2, subdivide it again. Play around to positioning. This would. Add a weighted normal modifier. Keep it sharp if you want or not. Uh, if you're just coming up with the design and concept and block it out or whatever, this works out pretty well. It's not a big deal. So, on a side note, you notice there's a little shading issue here. This is a known issue with Blender. When it comes to shading, uh, so there's no way to really fix that other than um, when you bevel. So I should be able to use Mesh Machine here. We'll see if that works. Mesh Machines that paid out on that. We'll let you unbevel things, which is nice. Um, but basically, clear the sharp there real quick. And when we bevel this, you probably want to use a profile shape of 0.7. And that's going to prevent a little bit of that weird kind of like hard kind of shading edge. You got to be careful of those ones. If you are not... Use a mesh machine, I don't know if you'd have a really good time trying to unbevel things, but you could try doing an alignment potentially on each individual section. The way that would work or the way it would look out is with machine tools add-on. Um, the easiest way to do it anyways with the machine tools add-on, which is free by the way, so um, you can press um, Alt-A and align left, then align top, something like that. And that's probably as good as it's going to get. I mean, you could try to align to this one, maybe, but try to bring that one up first, perhaps, and then align everything to it, align everything to it. You probably have to merge it. Of course, we got all this these modifiers on it, so it's looking really bad, but that's how you'd go about doing that manually. For the most part, uh, with machine tools, definitely the easiest way. Otherwise, you'll have to use... Uh, active element here and you'll have to uh, s and then hopefully line up sx zero s z zero to that single vertex right so all right so this is uh kind of the setup the way of working and so you'll get to see how that goes with the sub d and the time lapse right so check you guys out next time take care
Let's go. Let's go.